In this video, I want to spend a little bit more time looking at this, uh, taking a graphical view of the intensity problem that we just uh, worked with on the previous vid video. We came up with an expression for the intensity for source elevation x at a distance r from a point directly beneath the uh, source located at x. So we'll look at that kind of graphically. We'll also discuss a line of sight problem. Uh, we're on top of a mountain or a hill and how far, you know, what's what's the distance to the what's the distance to the horizon? So that two questions that we're going to take a look at. So for size the seismic illumination problem, we we um, we, we kind of assume that the point of highest intensity, obviously, is just going to be the point directly beneath the location of the, of, of the source. So, and, and that's true. That's, that's the case. And we know that the energy in that wavefront, the spherical divergence of, of that energy, is going to decrease in, inversely as the square of the distance from the source. It's basically a, an inverse um, square law. However, the height of the source that produces maximum illumination along the circumference at radius r will vary with r. And so we're going to take a look at that uh, first graphically. So just, just to take a look at this function and get an idea for what we're doing, we're, we're changing the elevation of the source x here, the elevation of the source above the layer of interest, from 0 out to 12 in this case. But R is fixed at 10 units. <clears throat> so the intensity, you know, you might have thought, well, it should be a maximum here. But if we, if we're out, if we're out at a, a distance 10 units from the source, and the source is laying right down on the surface, uh, th then we aren't going to get much illumination. We get pretty close to zero illumination. We can see that the illumination at a distance of 10 units, and this could be kilofeet or, you know, kilometers or, or whatever, is, you know, for a radius of, of 10 units, is going to reach a maximum somewhere here around 7 units. So this, this is in a relative sense. So <clears throat> now in this plot, I've... We're plotting intensity again, but we're looking at intensity as a function of radius for these different source elevations. X1, X2, 2 units, 3 units, 4 units, to 10 units. And obviously, <clears throat> for a radius of 0, when the source is 1 meter, uh, 1 unit above the surface, we're going to get really high intensity right at that point. That's kind of what we expect. And then for all these curves, depending on what the source height is, we move the source up to 10, the illumination drops off, you know, as the square of the distance. Uh, but we, we, we can see that they, they all drop off very rapidly as we go out with increased radius from the point directly beneath the source. So that, that's kind of what we'd, we'd expect to see. Now, however, if we're, you know, let, let's say that, that we want to maximize the intensity out seven units from a point directly beneath the source. So we're, we're out here at a radius. You know, we just showed in the, in, in the um, previous, previous diagram here that we get to, for for a radius of 10, we get a maximum here at 7. For a radius of 7, that, that maximum is for a source height of about x equal to 5 units, or 7, the radius, over the square root of 2. So, and so we can see in a relative sense, we're kind of zooming in on this bundle of... Uh, of, uh, <clears throat> of curves, we see that this curve is going to be, the curve associated with a source elevation of 5 is going to be a maximum uh, at 
seven units out along the uh, out along the surface from a point directly beneath the uh, the source. So that's that's kind of what we're looking at. We're looking at what height will maximize the illumination at a certain radius. So if we're looking out at r equal 10 units, we've got a source height of 7.1 r over the square root of 2, and we can see here that yes, indeed, this you know the uh, uh, the intensity for the light source or the um, seismic source at an elevation of seven units maximizes the intensity uh, at a radius of ten units. We can see that there's a bundle in here for six, seven, and eight. They're kind of clustered together. There's not a whole lot of difference between them. We can see that uh, this, you know, for a source elevation eight units above the surface, that if we go out here a little bit further, it's going to become the maximum. And if we go back in this direction, we can see that a source um, elevation at, at uh, six units would be the maximum, would come up here and cross over this, this line. Another way to think of this problem is uh, you've got a light, you're lighting a, a parking lot, uh, you want to maximize the illumination out a certain distance, maybe you have overlapping uh, uh, street lights or lamps in a parking area. So, you know, this, this problem, this analysis would also uh, apply to that, that application as well. In the next problem, uh, we want to look at a line of sight uh, problem, and, and so we could be up on top of a mountain, and the mountain has a elevation h, and we're on a, an object like the Earth, which has a radius r. This could be the Moon or Mars or any other <clears throat> any other object, some asteroid. Uh, we're kind of assuming a, a spherical shape here, but if we're up this high on the mountain. What is the length of this line of sight? Where is this point out along the horizon? How far out along the horizon can we uh, can we see? That's um, <clears throat> so. We've got a particular example here. If we could increase the elevation by ten meters, how much further would would you be able to see? Well, first of all, we have to you know, kind of express L, the line of sight in terms of the radius of the Earth, for example, plus this additional height. We can see that L is, you know, we've got a right triangle here with sides R and R plus H and L. So an L is going to be the hypotenuse squared minus uh, R squared. It's going to give us this length over here. So that gives us L is equal to 2HR plus H squared to the 1 half power. We also know that D theta is equal to the inverse cosine of R over R plus H, and DS is equal to R D theta. And we'll come back to this later, and we'll talk about the length DS for an observation point up here at an elevation. So we have two quantities here. We have the line of sight, the length of that line, but we also have ds. We might wonder what is the incremental distance out along the surface that we're actually seeing. Okay, so there are actually two problems here. We're going to deal with the first problem. How does the line of sight distance change with an increase in height dh? And then the second problem is how does the surface distance uh, change with that same increase in elevation? Elevation. So we're, we're just going to do uh, the first one because we haven't talked about derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions yet, but we'll, uh, we'll do that uh, uh, in the next video. So taking a look at the first problem, we want to know what, we want to know how dl varies with uh, dh. In other words, we, this is our line of sight, this is the mountain that we're standing on. If we change our elevation by an amount dh, how much? does the line of sight distance vary? And so we have that L was equal to um, R plus H squared minus R squared to the one half power. That reduces to this. And uh, you know, and I, I'd ask you to use your um, <clears throat> differentiation rules to differentiate this uh, quantity to, to evaluate DLDH and show that DLDH is going to be equal to R plus H 
over 2hr plus h squared to the 1 half power. Notice that we've, we, we had to use a chain rule here, and we're, um, <clears throat> You know, we can obviously see where we've reduced the power by one to get two uh, hr uh, plus h squared to the to the uh, uh, minus one half. We have to differentiate the inside terms with respect to h, and um, those two should cancel out. So give that a try. Now, if you increase your elevation by ten meters, let's say, you know, this is the dLdh. This is the quantity that we need to evaluate. We're going to assume that we have um, a radius of the Earth, 6,370 kilometers, and we're at a height of uh, 3,000 meters. Um, at 3,000 meters, an increase in elevation of 1 meter be 32.6 meters, 10 meters, 326 meters. So you get a, you get you get a good you get some a good good advance on your uh, uh, territory uh, by uh, trying to get a meter higher. Um, now, <clears throat> do the same thing, but evaluate uh, for an elevation h of only 50 meters. Okay, so next time we will talk about the derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions, and we'll also talk about that second problem, which was to determine the increased distance along the horizon, this ds, for an increase in height, dh. Talk to you next time.